G'day trendsetters, I'm John with Gravel Cyclist and I'm coming to you today not with content from the world of gravel cycling but some content that relates to bicycle technology and that sort of gear is right up my alley. Inside this red Mavic wheel bag is the world's craziest bicycle wheel to be designed and manufactured, the wear and tear black hole wheel. Before I unbag this wheel, first little history about the wheel's inventor, Mr. Paul Lou, that's spelled L-E-W. Paul was racing triathlons back in 1986, and circa 1989, he decided he wanted to work in the bicycle industry. Like a lot of inventors and boffins, aka very smart people, he didn't have an idea of what to do or how to kickstart his career but he designed a bicycle wheel anyway. He was fortunate to cross paths with a gentleman who had some money to invest, and together they founded a company. That company was known as Wear and Tear. Wear and Tear specialized in dynamic airflow engineering and high modulus military grade carbon fiber. And that is where Paul's idea for a hubless, spokeless, bicycle wheel originally designed for track cycling was designed and manufactured. The wear and tear black hole. Behold, the wear and tear black hole wheel. That's one side and here's the other side. And I'll show it to you closely momentarily. Manufacture of this wheel and essentially what is a fork combination began in around 1993. In 1994, former professional cyclists with teams such as 711, Motorola and Saturn, yes Saturn the motor car company, began working with wear and tear to experiment with the wheel. In fact, Brian took this wheel to the velodrome and began racing the 4,000 meter individual pursuit. The black hole wheel and fork combination also caught the attention of Jürgen Zak, a very prominent triathlete at that time, who set many bike split records at Kona, and he was intending to race this wheel. Unfortunately, this wheel also caught the attention of the UCI. The UCI overlords decided it was an unfair advantage and therefore banned it. They also banned many innovative bike designs in the 1990s. And if you move forward to 2021, the UCI now wants to get into gravel and I'm sure impose a bunch of bull rules that nobody needs or wants. Ditto for USA Cycling. Moving on back to this amazing bit of wheel technology, I think it's time to give you a closer look. Starting at the top you have this titanium steerer tube and this was from the time period where threaded headsets were the norm. So the top is threaded. It's connected to the center portion of the wheel and there are four roller bearings. One, two, three, four. And the rim itself, which is where the tire is mounted to, rolls like that on the outside. If I flip it over, you can get a better look. So here you can see the roller bearings I'm talking about, four in all, and these can be adjusted. So basically like a tension type adjustment. And right here is where you install the valve. Now this is for tubular tires, glue on tires. I believe this wheel has never ever been used. There was a tire mounted at one point in time, but the steerer tube has never been cut, and I'm never gonna mount a tire to this. Wear and tear, there you go. High modulus, military specification carbon, dynamic airflow engineering, and of course, made in the USA. And here's what's interesting, there's a black hole pre-ride checklist. Before riding, always follow the procedures listed below. Check bearing points for stress fractures. Ensure the top binder bolt is tight. Ensure bearing surface is clean. Okay, make sure you follow those directions. There's also a little screw here. It seems to be fixed. I'm not sure what the deal is there. 
not going to play with that. But this rim here on the outside is carbon fiber and it's bonded to the rim that rolls around on these roller bearings. These are almost like skateboard or roller skate wheels sort of thing, really. Let's flip it over again. Now I'll spin around for you a moment because it's quite noisy. Here it is in the profile as the wind would see it ideally coming head on. It doesn't present much of a surface to the wind when you look at it. And here's the other side, very narrow. And here's a look again at the side. And the other side. Now, I know all of you want to hear how this wheel sounds. I've not adjusted the tension. Like I said, you can adjust the tension on one of these roller bearings, this one in particular. So this is as it was from the factory back in 1993, 94. Here we go. Could you imagine this thing coming down the road? Wild. Now, before anybody asks, I'm not going to mount it. It's never going to be mounted. It's just too rare to ride. I count myself very fortunate to own this thing. They made less than 100 of these things. Let's do that again. Now I mentioned the adjustment. You can see there's some wiggle there. So I could take that out by adjusting this bolt right here and take some of that play out and it'll probably roll a little bit better. And the other final thing, before anybody asks, it's not for sale. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel for very interesting content such as this. Where else are you going to see a black hole wheel by wear and tear? Nowhere. Right experience videos, no bull gravel bike reviews, and other madness as all of it is released to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.